welcome to Veterans Remember. My name is Dick Gooding, and I'm a Hopkinton veteran and native of Hopkinton, and uh, served a number of years in the U.S. Army, uh, in both in Vietnam and, and outside of uh, Vietnam. And I'm going to be your host over the next few weeks as we invite uh, a number of veterans in to talk about their stories, both in Hopkinton as kids growing up, uh, their experiences, perhaps uh, their family's experiences, and uh, their opportunities to serve uh, our country and our town in wartime. Uh, we hope that it'll be very interesting, we expect it to be very interesting, and uh, we look forward to it. Uh, this evening, uh, joining me is Roy Stratton, who's sitting right here uh, next to me, and Roy is a, a, a certainly a longtime uh, resident of Hopkinton, and. Uh, uh, certainly has a story to tell uh, himself. Roy, welcome. I appreciate you coming to, to tonight, and we look forward to uh, uh, meeting with you and listening to a little bit of your stories. Okay. Uh, were you born in Hopkinton, Roy? I mean, no, uh, I was born in Ashland. You but, were. Uh, shortly after, uh, about a year, we moved uh, to Mount Auburn Street in Hopkinton. You did, and, and how big a family were you uh, part of? Uh, I had, uh, there was three of us. There was an uh, older brother, Alvin, and he was in the Navy. And then I had a brother, Merrill, mm -hmm. and uh, he was in the Army. And he served in the Korean War. Oh, and, no kidding. Well, uh, uh, did you go to school here in Hopkinton? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I, yeah, I graduated from uh, Hopkinton High, uh, class of 42. Now, where was the high school back then? <laughs> Here, yeah, the old Red Burke building. Oh, yeah. which is now affectionately known as Steggy Prep. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right uh, in front of Carrigan Park. Right, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, how big a class was, uh, was your class? Uh, 24. 24. Yeah. Well, it's changed a little bit today, Roy. <laughs> uh, tell me, what brought you into the service? Well, uh, I joined the service because at that time, well, some of the uh, my classmates had already gone in the service, and of course the war was on, and everybody was very conscious of uh, what was going on, and uh, I uh, had a chum whose name was Alden Sables, who lived down at the end of the street, and he says, come on, Roy, he says, uh, why don't we join the Navy? <laughs> so uh, Alden and I took a trip into Boston, and uh, we went to the recruiting office and we signed up for the Navy. No kidding. Now, yeah. is that just after you'd graduated from high school? Uh, right after I graduated, mm -hmm. I uh, took a uh, government sponsored course in Framingham down on Howard Street sure. on uh, machine sh machinist. And I they see. had these old lathes, you know, that they all ran from a single drive up overhead. Yep. And you had a long, big stick. If you wanted to start them, you push the stick. You know, and if you were cutting a thread, why well, you had to guess it when to, to put the brake on. You know, being let, the thing would have to coast. Yeah. Otherwise, you you know ruin the piece. But what did you folks think of you uh, <laughs> jumping on a uh, train and heading into Boston to go oh, sign up for the Navy? Of course, my brother had already he already joined. Oh, really? Yeah. Was he uh, already in wartime? Yeah. This is what, 1942? Yeah. And was he uh, already uh, Yeah, he son? was already in. Yeah. Where was he? Huh? Where was he located at that point in he time? He was in the Atlantic. He was uh, serving in, out in the Atlantic. And he, he was, was a, a he Navy was man, the too. Navy. Yeah, he was a gunner's mate. Uh -huh. And he was on, the, uh, on a destroyer on the Merman's run to Russia. Wow. Yeah. And what did your parents think of you of you joining up while your brother well, was already in? My father was on the USS North Dakota. He was a signalman on the USS North Dakota. So. At, the, at the same time? No. Oh, okay. No, yeah, many years ago when yeah. he was young. I you see. Know, around 21. Yeah. yeah now, so uh, when, you mind. when you joined, you and Alden joined together? Yeah, we did, yeah. Now, did you stay together during your time in the no. service? No. No, he went, uh, he went to uh, Newport to take his boot camp, and I went to Great Lakes to uh, take mine. Oh, Great Lakes. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, uh, my stepfather uh, was a trainer during oh, World yeah. War II at, uh, at, the, at Great Lakes Navy uh, yeah. training station. I didn't much like it. You didn't much <laughs> like it there. <laughs> well, it was on the shores of Lake Michigan, right? Uh, it's pretty it was cold in the there. winter. Yeah. Yeah. We landed there on New Year's Eve, 
So what, uh, <laughs> after you finished your, uh, uh, your boot camp at, uh, yeah. at Great Lakes, uh, where did you go from there? Well, we all got our sea bags packed and we all went down to the uh, station where they were shipping sailors out and everybody was getting on the train, you know, and leaving. And we tried to find out where we were going and the, the only thing that would tell us that we were gonna go east. So when it come at you and the guy says, well, pick up your sea bags. He says, and march east, east across the drill field to barrack 606. So we had to stay there another 12 weeks. Oh, is that right? Machinist made school. Oh, I see. <laughs> we were hoping we'd come to Boston, you know? Yeah. So after you finished up at uh, Machinist Mate School, yeah. uh, uh, where did you go from there? And we were shipped to uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Navy Yard. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were waiting for the USS Appalachian, the ship that I was assigned to, oh. to, be, uh, to be finished. I see. Well, Roy was, uh, <laughs> was kind enough to bring in uh, this picture of the USS Appalachian. And... Uh, uh, we'll give you an opportunity to, to take a look at this. And Roy, maybe you can explain a little bit about your, uh, yeah. your service and a little bit about the uh, Appalachian itself. Yeah, the Appalachian is, uh, it was one of it, the first of its kind. It was called the AGC-1. And it was uh, a C-3 hull, which was uh, a cargo hull originally, and was completely refurbished into a uh, communication ship provided with uh, all kinds of radio equipment and radar. And it, the, the purpose of the ship was when you made an invasion, it was the lead ship to go into the invasion and had all of the uh, amphibious. We belong to the third amphibious force. And uh, when they made the invasions, why we were the leaders to lead all of the other ships. And I see. Of course. And, and this was commissioned in Brooklyn? Yeah, it was commissioned in Todd Erie Shipyards in Brooklyn. Yeah. And, when, and then where did, <laughs> which ocean did you go across? Did you well, go across the Atlantic or did you go around to the Pacific? We took a shakedown in the North River. And then uh, we went, when we come back, our captain, he was not very uh, seaworthy. <laughs> <laughs> and he tried, to, he tried to moor the ship on the dock without a tug. Oh, that's and nice. And he ripped all of the boats off of one side of the ship. <laughs> so we had quite an experience on our first run. Yeah. And uh, from there, uh, we went uh, on a shakedown to Norfolk, Virginia. And of course, the ship was empty. We didn't, we had only a minimum amount of supplies aboard. I see. She was sitting way up out of the water. And we had another storm down in Hampton Roads, Virginia. I see. And I happened to be standing a steering gear watch at the time, which is a, down below the, the uh, aft on the ship, as far back as you can go. And the ship, when it, it would be going up and down, you know, and the propellers would come out of the water, and the whole back end of the ship would shake. <laughs> <laughs> and the seaman was standing watch with me. And he was sick, and he was up chucking, you know. Oh, and geez. I and I tried to not to watch him, you know. <laughs> to look at him. I went, oh, I uh, took a rag, you know. I started wiping down these big hydraulic cylinders, you right. know, and doing anything I could. But finally, it got to me too. We were both sick as dogs down there. <laughs> so you were you were quite that a was seaman. My first experience. Quite a seaman. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, once you finish shaking down the. Uh, uh, you know, the initial yeah. cruises, uh, where, did you, where did you wind up going from there? Yeah, we went out through the Panama Canal, mm -hmm. and we ended up in San Diego. I see. And there we took, uh, our rear admiral came aboard, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Connolly. They called him close up Connolly because of his uh, daring feats over in the African, uh, near the coast of Africa. Oh, he'd, he'd been over <laughs> he, in Europe. He took his ship in so close to the shore, you know, and uh, didn't have much armament, probably a five-inch gun. But anyways, he earned the name of close-up Connolly over there. Now, what kind of armament did you have on this ship? Yeah, we had uh, two five-inch guns fore and aft, and we had uh, 40 millimeters and uh, 25 millimeter, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, once you got through the canal, I'm sure then you started to head into harm's way. Uh, yeah. Once you, uh, had you picked up, you, you had your yeah, crew. Yeah, we picked and, our uh, stores and everything. And, yeah. and all your, uh, yeah. all the people who were going to, yeah. what, do you have Marines with you? Yeah, we did have some, yeah. We picked them up in Hawaii. I see. Yeah. And then, uh, and then we where'd you go? To, we went to Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal. Yeah, but... Uh, Guadalcanal was secure at the time. I see. Yeah. So this was after this the, was after the, the famous battle, battle yeah. for Guadalcanal. Yeah. And, and uh, we, tell us a little bit about uh, that, those experiences. We made the run between Guadalcanal and Hawaii and back to Guadalcanal. We pulled in and uh, I think the port was Tulagi in Guadalcanal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was... Uh, there we were prepared for the invasion of uh, Kwajalein in the Marshall Islands. Oh, sure. Yeah. I think that's been used afterwards <laughs> as a bombing, uh, an area where the Kwajalein, I think they've used that as a bombing range for, yeah. for training after that. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, what, what, what did you do there? I mean, were you as well, part of an invasion group? Yeah. I see. We led the, the LCIs and the mm -hmm. LSTs and the smaller... The slower craft, you know. But in fact, our ship could only do about 15 knots. But we and we had plenty of protection. We had uh, destroyers out on a perimeter. I see. And we even had some of the battleships, the old battleships mm -hmm. that came along with us. Hopefully, so hopefully had, you kept your head down most <laughs> of the time while you were doing that. Uh, Kwajalein was pretty much a pushover. Was it? We didn't have much resistance. Yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet you found some later <laughs> on, though, didn't you? Yeah, when we got to the Philippines, yeah. So you went from Kwajalein. How long were you over in the uh, uh, Pacific Theater in, in all? A uh, year or two? No, over two years. Over yeah. two years? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, where did you see the most interesting in the, uh, parts of your well, stay? Well, after the Kwajalein invasion, we went mm -hmm. to Guam. Mm -hmm. We took the island of Guam. Of course... Usually the uh, aircraft and uh, heavy cruisers and battle wagons and stuff would go in and try to soften, you know, sure. things up. But, you know, the Japs, they were smart. They would dig, dig down in and right. go into caves and so forth. And, uh, you know, there was quite a bit of resistance. Yeah. But I think the worst of it was uh, in the Philippines. Now, uh, did you go there from Guam or did you have other stops on your way uh, to get to the Philippines? Uh, it was Kwajalein, yeah, there was Luzon was the next, uh, not Luzon, but uh, Lady Gulf was Lady the next Gulf. one. That's and a pretty had, famous war, isn't it? And we had the, uh, we had the uh, pleasure of bringing back Douglas MacArthur to the Philippines. He was among our uh, flotilla on, on the Nashville, yeah, yeah the cruise of Nashville. Well, Douglas MacArthur, uh, being a good Army guy like, like me, uh, uh, he and I share some heritage. Uh, when we went to, I went to West Point, and uh, yeah. uh, listening to his uh, famous speech, or one of his famous speeches, was always an inspiring thing. Yeah. Uh, quite a guy. I guess he ran afoul of... Calm cow pipe. That, that's right. He <laughs> ran afoul of uh, Harry Truman at some oh, yeah. point, but I guess many of the good military men... Uh, yeah. Sort of dance to their own tune, anyways. Yeah. Uh, so you. But that were... was uh, where we ran into more more problems with, uh, because I think the uh, Japanese were getting desperate at that time. Yeah. You know, and that's when they started using the kamikazes, and uh, we used to make smoke in the evening. You know. Right. To uh, protect the ships. Sure. And if there was be an opening, like every every ship in the fleet would be shooting up through that opening because they. You know, they were fearing that a, a plane was come through. Wow. And uh, I had the opportunity of uh, joining uh, some duty in a picket boat. A picket boat? What yeah, is a picket it, boat? It, well, at that time, they had the, the Japanese were sending these uh, swimmers out oh, I to see. tie a charge on your propeller of the ship and try to blow it off so that you, the You're ship would be water. helpless. Yeah. And then they could attack the ship, you know? Hmm. So we said uh, each ship sent out picket boats and they would go around, you know, the ship. I see. Just sort and of we would look for, looking for swimmers. Looking for swimmers, yeah. Huh. 
and uh, at the same time with to making the smoke, you know. <laughs> and uh, if there was an opening, then everybody would be shooting up, and you'd be sitting in the boat like this. Yeah. And the, one so the shrapnel one. Be, sure, be falling in the water all around you. Oh, well. from your own from your <laughs> yeah. own uh, shots. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, jeez. So that's the last that's the last time I went out on the picket boats. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> it was a volunteer service, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how long uh, how long were you in the in the Philippines? Uh, we went well. We we went from uh, Lady. Mm -hmm. We went to uh, Luzon, which is on the northern part. Right. And we uh, had a little invasion force there. I see. The only thing was, the Japanese were coming down through the Surigao Straits. Right. And for five days, we steamed eight hours west and then eight hours east. And then eight hours west. We covered 5,000 miles back and forth before we could make the invasion. Really? Because we were trying to dodge. Uh, while this other battle was going on ahead of us, you know? Yeah. And the Japanese had some huge, <laughs> oh, yeah. huge ships back then, as oh, I yeah. recall. They, I mean, they, they, most of their, their big armament uh, wasn't it quite a bit bigger than anything that we oh, had. Yeah. 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 So we didn't want to take them head on. You wanted to sort of get away from them yeah. and use a little evasion. Techniques. I guess they call that the turkey shoot or something. The turkey shoot. We shot down a lot. Tremendous amount of the aircraft. Oh, no kidding. In that battle, yeah. Hmm. So, uh, uh, where were you at the time the war ended, over in uh, in the Pacific? Well, we went to uh, Tokyo. You were in Tokyo? Yeah. No, we went to uh, the island of Hokkaido. We I were see. the first ship to uh, send people ashore. Is the this after of the Hokkaido. after the uh, yeah the after bombs? The, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was after the war. Yeah, after hmm. the. You know, they surrendered. Yeah. Well, what... Uh, and then we went from to a submarine base down in uh, Sasebo, and we did get to see Tokyo. Is that we right? We went to show in Tokyo, yeah. So when did you come home well, after the war? It was in uh, March of uh, 46. March of 46? Yeah. So you were, you were in just about four years? Uh, yeah, three years and two months, I think. Yeah. And did... Was that it for you for the Navy, or did yeah. you, yeah? You, did, yeah? you didn't want to stay in? No, no. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get out. You couldn't wait. <laughs> so what brought, uh, uh, I guess you came right back to Hopkinton. Yeah. Now, did you ever run into any other people from Hopkinton while you oh, were in, yeah. uh, while in, you were in the war? Yeah. In Honolulu. I was just boarding a bus, and who's on the bus but Bob Ferris. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And huh. so... We met another classmate, Jimmy Jones, and Bob, he was uh, an ensign at the time on an aircraft carrier, and so he took us to the uh, officers club and we had a reunion, a reunion of sorts. Wow, isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, uh, it was just an accident that we yeah. met. I've heard uh, you know a lot of people say that, and there have been so many people from Hopkins uh, uh, serving in World War II that uh, yeah. I, I know, uh, I'm, you know, related by marriage to the Bowker brothers. Oh, yeah. and there were a bunch of them, and they bumped into each other all over Europe, you know, yeah. two or three of them. And I'm, I'm sure we're going to hear from Jerry. Jerry wouldn't miss an opportunity oh, yeah. to share some of his stories because he, <laughs> uh, he has lots of remembrances. Oh, and, yeah. uh, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be talking with us uh, yeah. uh, pretty soon, too. So when you get back to uh, Hopkins, what, kind of what kind of a greeting did the, did the people, the residents of Hopkins, how, how big was oh, Hopkins yeah. in that? Couple of thousand people? Oh, I don't know, maybe four thousand, yeah. five thousand. Yeah. And what kind of a greeting did you get? Well, we got a welcome home. Is that yeah. right? Oh yeah. They have big welcome home parades. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. they really? Yeah. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. And uh, uh, so, what did you do after you get out of the army? <laughs> well, I went to work for. Uh, I thought I was going. Wanted to work outdoors, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go back to the factory, <laughs> and so. I took a job with Wyman Nurseries, mm -hmm. and that lasted until the uh, frost came. <laughs> and then I decided that I think I better go back inside. So I went back to work at Fenwall. Yeah. At Fenwall, right there yeah. in Ashland. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and how long did you work at Fenwall? Yeah. 
I was there for 41 years. 41 <laughs> years. Boy, it's a different world today, Roy, I'll tell you. Yeah. I started off as a machine operator and I yeah. ended up as a supervisor, charge of five departments. <laughs> yeah, we were, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about yeah. uh, a mutual friend, Jim Keogh, oh, yeah. uh, who's uh, Rick Keogh, who's a local veteran, but uh, his father, who was yeah. a very close personal friend of my folks. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Jim was responsible or in a great extent to having me get an appointment to West Point. So I right. I found very fond of uh, <laughs> Jim Keogh, who was, I guess, the big wig at Fenwall back then in yeah. the 50s. Uh, he was vice president of manufacturing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. So uh, uh, 41 years at Fenwall, and you're still in Hopkinton. Yeah. And where do you live now in Hopkinton, Roy? Live in Woodville. Live in Woodville. The capital of Hopkinton. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm not, you know, normally they I'm don't sure let people from it. Mayhew Street uh, slip into Woodville. Oh, yeah. Did you have to go in in the dark at night? <laughs> and as you always a Gigi Gumi. Yeah. <laughs> Lake Whitehall. Yeah. Well, anything <laughs> else? That's Lake, I call yeah. it. <laughs> anything else, uh, you know, that you think? Well, I met my wife and uh, uh, just before I went in. Oh, did you? Yeah. And... Uh, we decided that, um, you know, we would wait. We weren't going to get, we got engaged, but we weren't going to get married. Yeah. Till it was over. Till it was uh, over, huh? So I come back, and then in a couple of months, uh, we got married, and I moved up to uh, Aiden Rose Street, and I lived there for a year. I rented. And then my uh, father in law, <laughs> he uh, had the opportunity to buy some property on Spring Street. Sure. And he picked him up for back taxes. So there was uh, three pieces of pro uh, uh, houses on there. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, well, if I wanted the little one, you know, he says, it's in tough shape, but if you want to take it and fix it up, boy, <laughs> you can have it, you know. So oh, I boy, moved it's over there and I've been there ever since. Been there ever since. Uh, well, even though you moved here when you were one, you're certainly a Hopkintonian. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, true I'm a and true. I, I, I think you completely qualify as a townie, you know. He, even though the, I guess there are some purists who say, you, well, you had to have been born at home in Hopkins. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't adhere to that. Uh, and to, you know, even though I moved here when I was five, I sort of feel like a townie, although I've moved in and out of town a few times. But right. I can't say that I have the continuous service that you do. Uh, Roy, is there anything else about your service that, that you can reflect upon that you, that you remember with either... Uh, well, with glee or with... There was the, one thing that I, you know, I'm not, I don't, well, I went, uh, I enlisted with Alden Sables, right? Mm -hmm. And he was on the uh, Monaghan, and that was one of uh, three destroyers that capsized in a, in a uh, uh, typhoon? typhoon, yeah, on, off, off of Japan, I think it was. Yeah, yeah and he, he lost his life. So you lost yeah. your, your boyhood friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's too bad. Yeah, that's too bad. But that's not a certainly not a unique story in yeah. uh, in the annals of uh, war history. War is yeah. uh, not a fun thing, and it's pretty cruel uh, in many respects. But uh, certainly, we're appreciative of your efforts and uh, and Alden's as well. Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, you know, we're very appreciative of the fact that you shared the stories with us today. Uh, again, uh, this is. Uh, Veterans Remember, and uh, Roy has been uh, kind enough to give us this opportunity to, to share with, uh, with you uh, his story. And uh, you know, I'd like to thank Roy uh, from the bottom of my heart and appreciate the opportunity to sit with you. Thank you very much, and happy to do so. <laughs>
The shows produced are made possible by viewers like you who took the time to volunteer. Please contact the station and become a volunteer. Bob, lighting all set? Looking good, Jim. Thanks. Okay, guys, the quickest 26 minutes you ever had. It's going to fly by. All right. Tom, you ready to go? Yep. You're mostly on the guest with some over the shoulder shots. John, yeah. you're going to be mostly on the host, but get ready to truck right and give me some shots with both of them. Gotcha. Burl, at 15 minutes in, we need to cue them for a 60 second break. Got it. Thanks. You want one of these? Send me an email. I'll pull a few names out of a hat. Finally, I keep them. <laughs> Thank you. You found the channel and you've watched the shows. Now, find out how the magic happens on Inside HCAM. Twenty-six minutes you ever had. It's gonna fly by. All right. Tom, you ready to go? Yep. You're mostly on the guest with some over-the-shoulder shots. John, yeah. you're gonna be mostly on the host, but get ready to truck right and give me some shots with both of them. Gotcha. Burl, at 15 minutes in, we need to cue them for a 60-second break. Got it. Thanks. You want one of these? Send me an email. I'll pull a few names out of a hat. Finally, I keep them. <laughs> Thank you. I don't get it. You had bologna and cheese, you had PB&J, and I had PB&J. Hey, I like your shirt. What's Be Free? Well, Be Free is a group of people in Hopkinton that helps kids make healthy choices about drugs and alcohol. What do you mean by that? Well, it means that we all work together to choose to do other things. What kind of things do you mean? Well, you tell me. What other things can you do with, besides drinking and smoking? Play outside. Four square. Mm -hmm. You can play wiffle ball, or you could even have a picnic. Hmm. Aren't we too young to think about drugs and alcohol? You're free right now, but when you get older, sometimes it gets harder to make healthy choices, but we always want you to feel like you can be free. There are many ways to get involved with the Be Free Youth Substance Abuse Prevention Project in Hopkinton. It's never too early to teach your children your values around drugs and alcohol. To get more information about the Be Free Project, visit BeFreeProject.org.